Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk about the mechanics of the hammer strength pull down machine and specifically the biomechanics of training in this particular case, the upper portions of the lats. Now, can you train other muscle groups most specifically on this machine? Absolutely. But just for reference, this is not going to be an anatomy based video. It's going to be a little bit more based on the physics of the machine and how I'm interacting with the machine to accomplish the goal of training the upper lats. Okay, so first things first, I think in any instance where we're looking at a machine and we're trying to break down the mechanics of the machine and how we relate to it, it's really important to first look at points of contact. So what do I mean by points of contact? Well, basically anywhere uh, I'm touching anything, right? So in this particular case, I'm obviously grabbing the handle, I'm touching the handle to, to pull on it, hopefully. Um, I have my opposite hand on the chest pad, which we'll talk about in a little bit why I'm positioned where I am. I have both my feet on the ground, and then I have my uh, femur anchored up against the thigh pad. So starting from sort of first principles of like points of contact and things like that, here's the point of contact that I'm pulling against. In other words, when I'm pulling down, the machine is also trying to pull me up. So if I know the machine is trying to pull me up, I really need to concentrate on shoving up into this pad. A lot of people tend to forget about what is going on down below and they're so focused and can't seem to forget about just the fact that they're pulling on the handle that they neglect the very thing that is actually going to allow them to pull down to begin with. Right. So if you are pulling down with this sort of arrow, I'll make that more clear like this. There is going to be an equal and opposite force. Shout out to Isaac Newton that is going to pull us up this way. Right. So to prevent ourselves from getting pulled up to the sky, what do we need to do? We need to shove up into this, which ultimately is holding us downward. And so I you can kind of see my calf is on here. Um, and the reason my calf is on there is because I'm shoving into the floor so that I can actually press up into this pad to prevent me from flying out of the seat. So that's first things first. And what you'll notice is with all these points of contact, there is a, a very specific relationship between them. In other words, it is not random that there is a point of contact here and a point of contact up against the pad. Those things are in essence designed to function synergistically, meaning the reason that there's a thigh pad is so that I can pull down so that I don't get pulled up out of the seat. All right, so here's one point of contact, two point of contact. My other foot is not too relevant in this particular case. And then the third one, as you'll note, is this um, uh, support that I have with my hand against the pad. Now, many people use this as a chest support, this little pad right here, if you can see it. Um, but obviously what you'll notice in this case is I'm not using it for a chest support. I'm actually scooted backward in the machine uh, and I'm using my hand against the pad. Now I'm doing this obviously single arm. And the reason I'm doing it single arm is because that's how I prefer to train lats. Um, it's easier in general to sort of focus on one side of the body, specifically when it comes to lat training and the downsides are very low apart from potentially the time constraint, the amount of extra time you may spend uh, doing two arms individually versus two arms at the same time. But in essence, when you are using a single arm, you can really adjust your body side to side. You can adjust for minor differences in where your arm wants to move relative to the machine. You can shift over. With this particular machine, it is a little bit wider than my frame prefers. So what I like to do is shift over to one side. So it's a little bit more in line with like a narrow arm path as you might use for lat specific training. Now, in addition to that, um, you also tend to be able to resist non-related fatigue in terms of its relationship to the goal. So my goal here is not to fatigue my erectors. It's not to fatigue um, you know, any of the muscles on the back side of my rib cage, like my posterior obliques or my QLs. It's really to make sure that I'm just 100% focused on the lats. And so again, doing that single arm is a great way to do it. Now, in addition, with this particular machine, and here's where we're going to start to now talk about the mechanics of the machine, if you are scooted up against this chest pad right here that I circled earlier, and you are not any distance away from the chest pad this way, because this chest pad can't move in this direction forward and backward, right? Can't move this way and this way. It can only just, it's only here. Um, if you are up against that chest pad, you will be utilizing a different portion of this arc. Okay, so to the mechanics portion of this conversation, here, just pretend this is a, a straight line. Okay, I'm just going to draw it with a little arrow here. Here is essentially the lever. Okay, and a lever is just a rigid body, in this case, that rotates. And here is the axis of this machine. We're not looking at it from a perfect angle, but for all intents and purposes, we'll be able to identify what we need to to understand what's going on here. And basically, this is like a seesaw, right? And so the weight goes on this side, and what the weight does is it pulls downward. Uh, hashtag gravity. Thank you, gravity, for allowing us to train our muscles this way. And what happens is when this side of the seesaw go goes down, what side of the seesaw goes up? The opposite side. 
right? And that's essentially what we're pulling against. Now, a couple of interesting things here to note in terms of the placement of this weight and where this whole long lever is starting. If I draw a direction of resistance down uh, from this particular point where I'm sort of closer to the top of the motion, right, where I'm, you know, more in that stretch position, this is effectively the distance, again, not a perfect perspective from which to look at this, but this longer red line is essentially the distance from which I'm uh, able to identify how far this weight is from this axis. And if you're not super familiar with concepts like torque and moment arm, this is what a moment arm is. Uh, a simple way to think about a moment arm is basically like, you know, what would be easier holding a 10 pound dumbbell uh, as far away from you as possible, like at the top of a lateral raise, or holding it down at your side close to you, right? The farther that that dumbbell moves away from you, the heavier it's going to be. And machines and first principles of physics will dictate that the same applies to any physical object, right? And so what happens with this particular machine, I'll go back to the beginning here, is when I get to this top position, right, that distance is basically sort of where it is here. And then when I get to the bottom, you can't really see the distance here because the weight is above the camera, but the weight essentially moves this much closer. And I will use a different color here to maybe illustrate it more clearly. The weight basically now moves this far away from the axis. Okay, so here's this red line that I drew to sort of designate that. I will just erase that. At the top position, because this whole long lever is pivoting again around like a seesaw, what it's going to do is it's going to actually traverse a little bit closer to the axis. So we started from red line, which was longer distance, longer moment arm, and in other words, heavier for me. And then we move toward blue line, which was a shorter distance. So we move from longer distance of the weight to shorter distance of the weight. And what that essentially means is that in this position down here, I am experiencing, I'm fighting less resistance than I am at the top right here. Now, what happens, to go back to the first point here, the whole chest supported thing, what happens if I move closer to this pad, right? If I move this way closer to the pad, then in essence, what needs to happen is this handle starts higher up. And when this handle starts higher up, this thing starts lower. And when this thing starts lower, it actually starts at a shorter distance, and then it will move at the end to this longer distance. Okay, so what is the point here, tracing back to the beginning, of scooting backward in the machine? Well, scooting backward in the machine, in essence, is just a way, it's just a strategy to start this lever. I'll erase all this other crap here because it's going to get in the way. It's basically just a way to start this lever as close to parallel to the ground as possible. In the top position, why would I want to make it harder, heavier in the top position? Well, because that's where I'm going to be stronger from a muscle standpoint and from the relationship between the handle and my joints over here, which is a kind of a separate conversation. The reason that you would scoot backward in a machine like this is to... Uh, change the starting position of this lever so that at the bottom you have this long distance and so that at the top as it pivots this way in an arc there's a shorter distance at the end in other words so you're matching the resistance and the challenge of the resistance a little bit more closely to how strong you are now there are many many layers to understanding that and sort of understanding the nuances of how that will re relate to our internal mechanics but that is a great strategy, this is a great strategy, in my opinion, for using a hammer strength machine and for understanding how a hammer machine works, or really any machine, based on the sort of seesawing principle and how this distance of the weight relates to the axis, right? And again, as I mentioned earlier, this is an upper lat specific activity for me. So I'm kind of just doing a row that is slightly high to slightly low. It's not quite a pull down, but it's somewhere in between a pull down and a normal horizontal row. That's going to be a great way to target the upper portions of the lats. Why? Well, because that is the direction within which they run. They run slightly low to high up into the upper arm, and they're going to pull the upper arm down like that in an arc. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about machine mechanics, moment arms, torque, and that kind of stuff, check out the link in the description to join my online biomechanics community. It's a totally free community, and I have uh, basically a, a beginner biomechanics course that goes through all the basic physics that you need to know to understand what the hell is going on in exercise and what makes certain things heavier, what makes them lighter, and what the relationship is between machines and our bodies and how those two things interact to form 
what we call exercise. So if you enjoy this, definitely, definitely, definitely join the free online community. We have over a thousand 1200 members or something like that already. Uh, and all of them are asking great questions, posting comments in the forums, uh, again, consuming all the free course material in there. So I think it'll be a perfect place for you if you enjoyed this video. So uh, please drop any questions or comments or concerns you have about any of this. And I'm happy to try to address all of them.